So good morning everyone and welcome to our service this morning, uh, wherever you are and uh, whenever you are watching this. Uh, some people obviously may be watching it in the week, um, later in the week or later in the day, but uh, wherever you are, we pray that you will be blessed by what you hear this morning and that you will have that sense of God's presence with you um, as we uh, are joined by God's Holy Spirit um, in commitment and love for one another uh, as we meet separately in our homes. Uh, nonetheless, we are united in this way. So we, um, we just pray for God's blessing on our time together. I expect many uh, people are feeling frustrated and, and lonely this morning. Um, as lockdown continues and perhaps are wondering when they will next be able to be with family and friends. Um, well, I suppose I want to just reassure you that that feeling is completely normal. And uh, I came across some research recently that was recently published in the science journal Nature, which, if, if you like, sort of gave us reassurance about that. Um, the, the research that was published said that um, the longings we feel during this kind of social isolation um, seem to come arise in the same part of the brain as the food cravings that we get when we feel we're hungry. And the, uh, the research paper said this, the researchers found that after one day of total isolation, the sight of people having fun together activates the same brain region that lights up when someone who hasn't eaten all day sees a picture of a plate of cheesy pasta. So if you're feeling um, those sort of cravings for being together this morning, then um, you're in good company because I'm sure we all are feeling that same way. Um, but nonetheless, we have lots to give God thanks for and we're going to start our service with a prayer of thanksgiving that was written by Esther Simpson. And she's written a number of prayers to be used in lockdown. And I chose this one this morning, a prayer of thanksgiving. So let's pray. You are my God and I will give thanks to you. You are my God and I will extol you. Psalm 118 verse 28. Lord my God, you are good all the time. All the time you are good. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for my senses. All I can see, hear, touch, smell, taste. Thank you for where I am, my home, my work, my street, your presence. Thank you for how I am, for the strength in my muscles, the blood in my veins, the breath in my lungs, the thoughts in my head. Thank you for who I am, for my family, my friends, my neighbours, for being your child. Thank you for when I am, for now, this day, this time in history. Thank you for it all. Thank you that you know, you see, you hear, you act, you hold, you love. Thank you. I will never get to the end of all there is to thank you for. You are good all the time. Amen. Well, our service this morning is a mission theme service. And we're blessed to have uh, Rupert Abbott, Abbott involved in our service, who is the missions director for Echoes International. And um, later we'll be hearing from, from Rupert um, as he brings us his talk, but also um, tells us a little bit about his work with Echoes International. And so we look forward to hearing from Rupert later. And thinking a little bit about mission, it, um, I suppose it comes naturally to us to focus 
mainly on our own lives, our own situation, our families, our friends, our work, the places where we live, even our own country. Our focus tends to mainly be on that. And of course, there's nothing wrong with that. It's natural. But we must understand that we worship a God who is interested in the whole world. He's interested in the big picture. And he wants us to get excited, excited about that as well. It's, I think it's easy to make the mistake of thinking that God is more interested in us and our part of the world than anywhere else. And so, in fact, we need regular reminders that God loves the whole world. Um, we think of that wonderful verse in John 3.16 that starts by saying, God so loved the world. That was what his motivation was in sending Jesus. And I want to share with you a psalm, Psalm 96, that very much indicates that God wants every people group in this world to praise him. He wants all the nations to know him and hear about his salvation. And in fact, he wants us to be part of um, the people who are going to go into the nations to bring his message. We have a call as his people who already know him to declare his glory among the nations, his marvellous deeds among the peoples. So if you have your Bibles with you, um, perhaps you could turn to Psalm 96 or if uh, you don't have a Bible nearby, then I'm sure you'll be able to follow it on the screen. But we're going to sing, uh, we're going to re rather read together Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations his marvellous deeds among all peoples. Um, no doubt we can all point to his marvellous deeds done in our lives, um, which we can tell people about. Our testimony, um, our personal stories are such powerful tools that God can use time and time again. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods, for all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendour and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due to his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendour of his holiness. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, the Lord reigns. The world is firmly established, it cannot be moved. He will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice, let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for he comes. He comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples in his faithfulness. And we're going to sing our first song now, um, singing of God's glory filling the earth. Um, and that's we stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship him now. How great, how awesome is he.
stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down and worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He! And together we sing. And everyone sing. Hi everybody, my name's Rupert Abbott and I just wanted to introduce myself as I'm speaking to you today. Um, I'm the Missions Director with Echoes International. I've had about 40 years um, involvement in mission in Birmingham, Pakistan, Thailand and now with Echoes International. Um, I'm father to five and grandfather to seven and Janet, my wife, and I are um, interested in keeping animals and so at home we have an assortment of ducks, chickens, rabbits, dogs and in a couple of fields around where we live we've got 26 uh, sheep and three goats and we keep two goats at home. And when I um, gave that as an introduction to the last church I did this kind of service for, they thought the last bit was much more interesting than everything else. So I thought I'd give you an, interest, an introduction here in the field and you can meet some of our sheep and goats. It's amazing what you can learn from looking after the four-legged sheep that you find very applicable to the two-legged human variety. Mm. Hi everyone. As I've already explained, I serve as the Missions Director of Echoes International. Echoes International um, became an organisation just three years ago when Echoes of Service and Interlink, a sister charity in Scotland, joined to become Echoes International. Between us we have 280 years of um, mission experience. This leaflet here explains something of that legacy. 200 mission workers into um, more than 130 different countries over that time. One of the um, 
drivers for the merger of these two mission groups uh, was to move from a legacy driven model to a mission driven model. The main means of communication previously was through the monthly magazine that um, as well as having mission articles in the front has excerpts from um, letters from mission workers um, around the world with prayer points for every day of the month. To move from only having that, which generally caters for an older age group, to developing a digital platform. So we have a, a very interactive uh, website and we have a Facebook page and we communicate on Instagram and we, and we tweet and we do <laughs> all those other things. But it's also um, moving from um, a focus on where mission is already being done to where mission needs to be done. Um, and what are the needs of the world today? Um, more than 7,000 unreached people groups, 80%, 86% of Buddhists, Hindus or Muslims who don't know a Christian personally. How does Echoes International work? Well, we come alongside the local church to facilitate mission. If somebody from a local church like St. Clear's comes to Echoes International and says, um, I want to take up this opportunity of short-term mission, short-term we categorise between two months and two years, then our response is, yeah, apply with this application form and we'll come alongside St. Clear's Chapel and we'll support your short short-term worker with £150 a month, will pay 50% of their SALT travel and health insurance in order to enable them to go. Long-term mission, well, similarly, we come alongside the local church. Um, we'll give that mission worker a discretionary allocation from reserves that have built up uh, over this past 150 years. Um, which is our responsibility to use for mission and with a contribution from the local church and from friends and supporters we'll say yes go. We'll support the leaders of the local church because we see mission as from the local church so we'll come alongside to support with complex issues today such as risk and security and um, safeguarding in a global context. So do check out our website www.echoesinternational.org.uk. We also have a Christian gap year course and uh, which is called First Serve and the video that's going to be shown now is uh, explaining somebody's experience of doing the First Serve course. Thanks. My name is Lizzie and I'm doing the FESA Gap Year programme. My time in India has been the most incredible, overwhelming, amazing, challenging, steep learning curve I think I've ever had in my entire life. It's been one of the hardest things I think I've ever had to do, but I've also enjoyed it so much and it's been one of the best things that I've ever done. And yeah, I wouldn't change a single thing of it for anything. Uh, while I was out there, I worked in a school. I worked with uh, kids in the hostel who stay on site. I played with them and I got to know them and I developed their relationships with them. And I helped lead devotions with them and I really just got to integrate and be part of the community there with them and it was the best fun. 
I also spent a lot of the Sundays helping out in church, playing piano and helping to lead the worship, which was really nice because it was it was really fun to get to experience church and Christianity in a different culture and see how they worship and how they express their relationship with the Lord and it's they have such vivacity and such enthusiasm for God and it's really humbling and incredible to see. Now that I've returned from my overseas placement in India with Foso, it's got me thinking. My highlight from the trip has really just been getting to know a load of new different people and to experience a new culture and to see how they interact with each other and how they go about their faith and how they worship and it's just been so fascinating to meet so many new completely different people and it's been really really exciting. God has really taught me while I've been away about the importance of finding him in the mundane and in the everyday because when things get really challenging and really overwhelming it's so so important to still be able to find God in the little things because that really helped me stay calm and gave me peace uh, whenever I was feeling overwhelmed. I'm really going to miss the incredible opportunity that I've had to to meet all these new people and experience all the new people, not only in India, but over the whole course of my first serve experience. I've loved the whole thing and it's been so amazing to get to meet so many incredible people and incredible Christians and it's the best program ever. I love it. To Rupert and Lizzie for those um, very interesting um, clips there and uh, that particularly struck a chord with me because um, of course Yaz went off to first serve some years ago and did a, um, a whole year um, various parts of the year at least um, she started off in Tilsley College in Motherwell and then went on to do a, a placement at a church in Sunderland and then spent three months uh, in India, like Lizzie uh, was reporting there. And I was recently speaking to Yaz and saying, you know, what sort of impact did it have on you this, this whole time, this first of um, course? And she said it, it, it really changed her perspective in, in her life. It was at, at a time in her life, perhaps when she had been going through some struggles, like, you know, often we are at that time in our lives, but uh, it gave her new impetus and uh, new clarity of thought, and it really helped her and continues to help her. I think she refers back to that time a lot. So I'd really encourage um, any young people who are watching this to have a look at that program and see if it could be something that um, maybe in the future you would be interested in going on as well. Perhaps there are parents of young people as well. Um, have a look at that program. It, it, it really is a super program. And um, uh, there's, I'm sure there'll be a huge amount of support coming from this church wanting to back anyone who's, who's going uh, to go on to a program like that, supporting them and praying for them whilst they're away. So, um, so that was good. But we're going to just pray now. And I um, found a prayer which I'd like to share with you, which was inspired by the psalm that we read, Psalm 96. And so this prayer um, is coming out of that psalm, and I think it really uh, helps us as we, as we think about the message of that psalm, about us going out into the nations, about us um, declaring the wonderful works that we have heard about um, to those around us. So let's pray. O oh Father, our God, that your people around the globe may sing psalms to you today. Fill our mouths to sing to you a new song. God, we thank you because we do not worship your creation, but instead we join our voices with that of the earth, the seas, the heaven, the fields, we exalt your name today, O God. Lord, I pray that our song may be transformed into actions, that we may effectually bless your name by telling of your salvation from day to day. 
that we may declare your glory among the nations, that we may spread the word of your marvellous works among our neighbours. Transform our song, O Lord, into actions today. Lord, blessed are the eyes which shall see the kingdom and the, er the ears which shall hear its songs. Hasten your advent, good Lord. God, our Lord, we bless your name, your fame, your word revealed to us. We delight in singing your praises. We take great delight in proclaiming all you have done in us, how you have changed our hardened hearts, how the gospel has transformed our lives. How we love you, O Lord, how we love to sing your praises. Father, that each day this week we may seek opportunities to transform our singing into actions, that by our deeds, our written and our spoken words, we may always announce the glorious message of free grace among all the people, to those close to us and even to those afar. In your presence we sing psalms because you alone are greatly to be praised. It is your name that we love and fear because you are clothed in splendour and majesty. It is only in your presence, Lord, that we find strength and beauty together, kissing each other. And as we stand in awe before you, we are encouraged by your Spirit to sing your praises, to raise our voices and bless your name. Mighty God, merciful Father, you have saved your people to bring glory to your name so that they may worship you and long for you. And today, as we sing your praises from every corner of the world, we also pray with one voice, don't haste your coming, O Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, we won't be fully satisfied until we see your face, until truth will dispel all evil in hypocrisy, until our voices will mingle with that of the angels singing in heaven. Amen. Well, we're going to sing again and we're going to worship the Lord in song and sing a, a, a couple of songs or three songs together. Um, some might be unfamiliar to you and one in particular is, has moved me this week as we practiced it and, and um, listened to it and read the words. And uh, let me just read you part of it that I think very much um, encapsulates what we're thinking about this morning of mission. I can see your heart in everything you've done, every part designed in a work of art called love. If you gladly chose surrender, so will I. I can see your heart eight billion different ways, every precious one, a child you died to save. If you gave your life to love them, so will I. Thank you. to you I won't be overwhelmed give me vision to see things like you do and God I look to you and you're where my help comes from give me wisdom know just what to do God, I look to you I won't be overwhelmed give me vision to see things like you do God I look to you you're where my help comes from. 
give me wisdom. You know just what to do, and I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. And I will love you, Lord, my rock. Forever, all my days, I will love you, Lord. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah. my cross you bore, so I could live in the freedom you died for. And now my life is yours, and I will sing of the goodness you forevermore. Worthy is your name, Jesus, you deserve the praise, worthy is your name, worthy is your name, Jesus, you deserve the praise, worthy is your name. Now my life is yours, I stand amazed in your love undeniable. Your grace goes on and on, and I will sing of your goodness forevermore. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise, worthy is your name, worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise, worthy is your name. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve your praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You deserve the love of our praise. You're the name above all names. Be exalted now in the heavens as your glory fills this place. You alone deserve our praise. You're the name above all, worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise, worthy is your name, worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise, worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. 
You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name, Jesus. You deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Every path 
designed in a work of art called love. If you gladly choose surrender, so will I. I can see your heart has been in different ways. Every precious one, a child you died to. you would again a hundred billion times and what measure could amount to your desire you're the one who never leaves the one behind like you would But what measure could amount to your desire? You're the one who never left the one behind. My reading for our service today is taken from John chapter 7 and verses 37 to 39. On the last and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time the Spirit had not been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. This took place at the Feast of Tabernacles, which, along with Passover and Pentecost, all Jewish men were expected to attend in Jerusalem. These festivals recalled God's acts of salvation, his care and provision for his people. And central to this festival was the water pouring ceremony that remembered when the Israelites were dying from thirst in the desert and when they appealed to Moses, who in turn prayed to God, who told him to speak to the rock and the rock gushed forth wonderful, refreshing, life-giving water. Each day during the Feast of Tabernacles, the priest carrying a golden pitcher, would go down the rocky path to the Gihon Spring, fill the pitcher with water, take it back up to the temple, and with the pitcher held high, he would walk around the altar before pouring it into a basin on the west side, while at the same time wine was being poured from the other side and this water and wine would flow down two pipes and meet. Water and wine, resembling the hope of a life suffused with joy. That's what wine symbolises while at the same time, 4,000 singers and 287 instrumentalists prayed and sang praise to God. The outpoured water was an enactment of God's promise to them in which he declared, I will pour water on the thirsty land, my spirit on your offspring, Isaiah 44. And verse 3. It pointed forwards to the future when the Messiah would come and when the Spirit would be poured out as generously as that water. So here in John chapter 7 verse 37, the last 
and greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, in fact, that could be understood as he, he yelled, if anyone is thirsty, come to me. He was the Messiah and drink. Whoever believes in me, streams of living water will flow from within him. Come to me, the Messiah, and drink. And the verbs come and drink are in the continuous tense. Come and keep coming. Drink and keep drinking. And the accompanying promise is this, that those who through trusting in his word open their needy hearts to Jesus will experience the wonder of his life flowing through them by his spirit, leading to a deep life transformation so that as believers in this promise of the Lord Jesus individually, we're like springs of water and together we're like an oasis, offering hope and deep sustaining joy to a thirsty world. I want to share with you a story about some good friends of mine, Harry and Stephanie, their missionary partners with OM, with EI, sorry. <laughs> I'd known them since 1987. We were colleagues together in Baltistan in northeast Pakistan. Stephanie was involved in medical work. Harry taught English and computer skills. I was there to run an agricultural development project. And Janet ran what she called an apricot club for our daughter Jessica, who was then three, and Harry and Stephanie's oldest boy, Daniel, who was then two. Both of them are now doctors, and she puts that down to the wonderful foundation she gave them uh, in the apricot club up in Khapalu. Harry and Stephanie have had various ministries in Pakistan over more than 20 years. Eventually they returned to Northern Ireland where Harry worked as an international outreach worker with um, the church in Belfast that had sent them out um, into their mission work. Then in 2018, Harry was diagnosed with an aggressive form of bladder cancer. When I visited them, he'd been told there was a 5% chance of survival. He had chemotherapy, then radiotherapy, the operation was cancelled twice. But when it was done, they amazingly found that the cancer hadn't broken out and spread. So his bladder was removed and six months later, when they were given the all clear, they again approached their church elders about pursuing the call that they'd had before the cancer had struck, to go and serve in a remote, a hard country. The elders agreed on various conditions, one of which was being able to get sufficient bags and other medical supplies that Harry would need. One of those conditions was fulfilled the next day when Harry's GP called and offered to get him a year's supply of all that he would need. And when I visited them, there were three big cardboard boxes in the foyer of their house. I reckon that would be at least 50% of their luggage allowance. So not long after arriving is in what is one of the most insecure countries of the world, um, they both got COVID-19. They both recovered. And over the summer months, they traveled up to this remote region where they wanted to get permission to run several 
projects in order to be able to uh, reach out to the people who live there. They described the four-day journey as more dangerous than any they had done in North Pakistan. And and that's saying something, because I used to travel up and down the Karakoram Highway, um, which is in the Indus Valley with uh, mountain on one side and the river Indus, often 500, 1,000 foot below us on the other side, and crossing uh, landslides and mudslides and going through swollen rivers. They share about being given food that you'd never want to eat again. To reach the people who were living on the edge. And to bring to those people the good news, such as Jesus gave to the woman at the well. Whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Good news of soul thirst quenching, life giving, life transforming water from the giver and sustainer of life, the Lord Jesus. They've since arrived safely back to their home in the city where they were happy to have their first shower in uh, six weeks. I'm inspired and challenged by their example of pursuing God's calling on their lives, of their love for Jesus being greater and more important than all other loves, of putting following the Lord first and trusting God to look after everything else certainly puts into perspective the journeys we may make to people on the edge of mental illness, to people on the edge of redundancy, to people on the edge of family breakup, to people on the edge because of physical sickness in this time of lockdown and global instability. The chairperson of our ministry team leaders at Glebe Chapel in Newant, where I'm one of the leaders, um, works with the NHS on what's called a frailty team. And what she's encountered working with those who are elderly and frail during this second lockdown is a sense of hopelessness. And she wants us to make a banner advertising our online services that we'll put up on the railings on the front of the community centre which we run and where our church meets. But, but she was saying what it needs to do must include the word hope because Jesus gives hope to the hopeless. At Echoes International um, we've been looking at the needs of Eastern Europe and rather than look at a region, we've focused on one or two countries. And before lockdown, my colleague John visited Slovenia with a friend from GLOW. Do you know that there are more Christians in the city of Bristol than the whole country of Slovenia with a population of more than two million people? Yesterday I had an email with the link to a video of a teen channel, teen challenge project for men with addiction issues, some of whom shared their stories of how God had changed their lives. And what was the project house called? It was called the House of Hope. At the beginning of this message I referred to the symbolism of Mixing water and wine, illustrating a life suffused with joy. And that as people who have drunk from the life-giving water that Jesus gives, our role is to offer hope and a deep sustaining joy to a thirsty world. Jesus promises that his followers would know his joy 
He said, remain in my love so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. It's tough engaging with the broken, with broken human lives. It's heartbreaking to get involved in other people's mess. But this is our calling as Christians. We're called to be pain bearers to a broken world. And to do that, we need to know the joy of the Lord. Jesus told his disciples that this joy is rooted in our assurance of salvation. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. And one of my favourite quotes from Dietrich Bonhoeffer, who stood up against Hitler in World War II, is this. The joy of the Lord has endured the poverty of the crib and the distress of the cross. Therefore, it is insuperable. It's unconquerable. Nobody can take it away. May we know the sustaining joy of the Lord as we hold out the offer of life to a desperately thirsty world. How good are you uh, at looking after house plants? Do you sometimes come across a, a withered, almost desiccated plant and after giving it some water, see it revive? May God use us to see withered, desiccated human souls revived. For amongst the final words in our Bibles, we read this. The Lord Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Let's pray. Living Lord Jesus, we praise you for your life-giving, life-transforming, soul-reviving water of life. May we drink freely and continually so that our lives overflow with life-giving streams to our thirsty world. And may we fulfil all of your plans for our lives as we pray, Lord Jesus, may your kingdom come. We pray in your name and for your glory. Amen. Um, encouraging and challenging word that he's brought to us this morning and I think the thing that um, struck me about what he said was that we have the um, ability to bring hope into this, the situation we, we find, find ourselves, ourselves in, 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 in um, um, at a time, at a time when, when perhaps so difficult and struggling with a lack of hope we have that means of bringing hope because of course, we've got a message of hope, but also that idea of the um, spiritual life flowing through us, of water, spiritual water flowing out from us that can refresh others. That's a very powerful message. Um, I was reminded of uh, our time living in Zimbabwe and in southern Zimbabwe where we were, uh, again, something that was uh, sort of I wasn't used to when I first saw it but the rivers there completely dry out in the dry season the dry season spans eight months of the year and during that time you can look at a, a riverbed and it's completely dry it's sand but then in the rains uh, the rainy season the, the waters start to flow again and the transformation is just incredible, seeing the life that that brings with the greenery and, of course, animals coming to, 
to drink from the water. And I think we need to pray for each other at this time when there is that sense of spiritual dryness. Um, there's a sense of, you know, we're on our own, we're not connected in the same way. And yet we need so much more God's uh, to pour his spirit into our life so that he can refresh us, but not only refresh us, but allow us to refresh others as well through the water of life. So let's continue to pray for one another that um, we may experience that this week and be able to, to bless and touch the lives of those that we encounter uh, through uh, the course of this week. So we're going to sing our final song now. Um, may the words of my mouth. And let's sing it as a a prayer of commitment, a prayer of response to what we've heard this morning, but also committing ourselves to the Lord. And it says this, For this is what I'm glad to do. It's time to live a life of love that pleases you. And I will give my all to you, surrender everything I have, and follow you. I will follow you. Thank you. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of my heart bless your name, bless your name, Jesus. And the deeds of the day and the truth in my way speak of you, speak of you, Jesus. For this is what I'm glad to do. It's time to live a life of love that pleases you. And I will give my all to you. Surrender everything I have and follow you. I'll follow you. Lord, will you be my vision? Lord, will you be my guide? Be my hope, be my life and the way. And I'll look not for riches, nor praises on earth. Only you be the first of my heart. For this is what I'm glad
So just a final blessing before we finish our service. Dear Lord Jesus, every good and perfect gift is a blessing from you and you have blessed me with so much. I ask that you would use me to be a blessing to others who are in need or facing difficulties. Make me a channel of your blessing, a channel through whom your love and peace and joy and love flow out from you, through me to others. May I be your hands to bless others. May you guide my feet to places where I can go and be a blessing. May my speech be seasoned with salt so that I may speak words of comfort and encouragement and speak the truth in love. Give me the grace to be available when others are in need. Lord, I pray that you may increase in my life and I, I may decrease so that the blessings that you pour through me to others may draw each one closer into the arms of the Lord Jesus. In his name I pray. Amen. Amen.